and welcome to another Nectar Thought Sharing Session. Last time we looked at the idea of how easy or how easy it isn't to take your event online and that was with uh, Bruce, our technical director, and Angie, our online uh, event producer. And uh, we did that on the Zoom platform to see the capabilities of that and, and what you could do with it and how you could elevate your message and your, and your delivery and things like the green screen. Uh, today we've obviously stepped it up a, a notch uh, and with our uh, studio broadcast partners, uh, Inverse Imaging, looking at what's possible you know, in a studio setting like this and, and, and what can be achieved in, in taking your event online digitally and, and considering its content uh, and, and, its, and its, its outcomes uh, with, with, the, with the sort of, these sort of resources. Joining me today are Tiffany and, uh, and Peter from uh, Nectar Creative Communications and Adam from Inverse Imaging. So first question uh, I've got is, is to Peter, uh, if I can get you to put your digital uh, event strategy hat on and ask you, what do you need to consider when developing uh, your digital uh, online event strategy and, and how does that differ from um, traditional live events? So I don't think it's any different when you're starting to plan your event, whether it's live or digital or hybrid. I think um, basically you need to start with um, considering what the objectives are of your stakeholders and then look at who is your audience, what behaviour you're trying to drive and how are you going to measure that at the end, so what are, what are the outcomes? And I think that process needs to be followed whether you're planning a live event or an online event. All right, so start with the outcomes and then work back to technology from there rather than... Yeah, absolutely. Leave, leave yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you, you need to think about your content. Then you think about, right, now how do we deliver that? And that is the same whether you were delivering it face-to-face -face or whether you then go, here's, here's my content, this is what I'm trying to achieve, let's look at the technology or the different platforms we've got and work it out from there. Cool. Um, and Tiffany, so what events are best suited for, say, a video conference call, a webinar, or a live stream from a studio like this? Uh, I think it's thinking about now, if, if you have a live event, it incorporates all of those things. So at a live event, you'll have a presentation, you'll have a workshop, you'll have networking, all those sorts of things. So it's now we've got all the different technology which we can bring together and almost aggregate it to make those work in all those different platforms. So I think if you're um, having a presentation, well, then you could look at doing your, your straight Zoom meeting, but then you could also think about doing it in a studio environment where your presenter um, looks a lot more professional. They're not just staring down a computer screen. Um, they could have the great lighting and uh, background screens. So... I think what we're trying to demonstrate here today um, is saying that you can now elevate it, you can make your online events look more professional, you can take it beyond the Zoom meeting, um, but still incorporating that technology as well to have those two-way conversations. Yeah, I guess a bit like Peter said, again, what are the outcomes you want to achieve and then how to use technology to, to, get, mm. to achieve those outcomes. So I've got a question for Adam now, and uh, what we've done to showcase the, the flexibility and, and the options you can, you can uh, take advantage of with a setup like this is we've got them coming in from a remote location. So if you've got someone you'd like to bring in who maybe can't get in or they're overseas or you want to you know, cut down on costs, uh, you have the option to do that and in such a way that's quite dynamic and flexible and they can be part of the conversation. So Adam, my question to you is um, previously live streaming was very much a, a one-way uh, communication. How has that changed now? Yeah. Hi, Nick. Hi, guys. Yeah, there's, I guess there's a number of different ways you can, you can add interaction with your audience. Into, into your broadcast and, and we have been using a, a number of different methods and I guess a lot of it depends on, on what type of event uh, you're producing. So for uh, keynote presenters at a conference we've been having you know perhaps unmoderated questions via, via a chat window. Uh, we've been adding a questions uh, button uh, which auto populates a spreadsheet, somebody can moderate that uh, and send that to presenter and they, they, can, they can pick and choose their questions uh, uh, as they go through. With a lot of sort of evening events, we've been using social media feeds, Twitter, Facebook, that automatically integrate in, you know, maybe they're shown as a, as a lower third, as we did with the recent broadcast, or just this weekend, we, we put together a, a charity event. Um, people texted in their questions, actually, and they were shown sometimes on the screen behind. They could chat about them, have a bit of fun, and later on, there was a band. We, we showed them behind, kind of, kind of looping, it depends on the event. It's good to have lots of different options for the client. The other one is uh, Zoom webinar, we find works really well for, for perhaps a breakout room uh, when you want that, that more one-on-one -on -one video integration with people. So you can take this live broadcast and, and, and you can supplement that with other 
I guess, technologies out there to, to get that two-way conversation going, that, that, that integration going. Yeah, exactly right, Nick. There's a, there's a large uh, selection of, of different technologies out there. None of them are, uh, you know, perfect for everything. It's, uh, yep, yeah, like I say, good to have a number of different options for the client, for them to pick and choose from, depending on the type of the event and, and their requirements. Yeah, yeah. And look, I had a question, I think we probably answered, Peter. There's so many platforms out there, there's so many tools out there, Zoom and Twilio, everything else. Is it possible to mix them up uh, and use them at the same time? So, yeah, so look, I think, and I think now, um, and probably just further to Adam's point, for me, the way I sort of think about it, like live broadcast now, you know, people are so used to watching television shows that they can interact with. So, you know, Q&A or the project or whatever, you know. It, so we've got to make sure that we deliver that at our live events regardless. And then I think you look at your different platforms like you would structuring your agenda in a conference and go, so what are I really, really important key, key messages? And I think they're potentially the ones that you would use a, a studio set up, you know, really make sure that they're, you know, they're driven home. Then potentially your breakouts, you might look at, you could go into some sort of Zoom meeting type scenarios. Um, you know, we've got other platforms like Twilio that can help with networking. But importantly, we now have access to, to a, a platform that gives, I guess, an integrated, almost like a, you know, a blanket over the top of that so that the, the user only has to log in and then they, they follow the bouncing ball almost in terms of the, the event experience. So they get the beautiful studio broadcast keynote from the CEO in New York and then they can go into different breakout rooms and then they can do a bit of exhibition and that's all stitched together with the platform we've got, which is the Events Air platform, which is um, I think is now making it make more sense to deliver a hybrid or a virtual event. And I think what that's doing is it's thinking about the delegate experience. So we... We're already thinking about that with a live event. So you think about the, the experience a delegate has from registration through to walking in the front door of the convention centre to being greeted and checking in and all that sort of thing. But it's now also thinking about that in the online environment. And that's where those um, platforms like Events Air, which are essentially integrating registration and the programming side of things with the broadcasting um, aspect and the networking and the exhibition all into one platform. That's all about delegate experience and making it seamless. Yep, and making them feel engaged yes. the whole way through. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Part of what's going on. Yeah. Great. And so, Tiffany, are there any other ways of engaging your audience that would benefit from a studio setup like this as opposed to just going via a webinar or, you know, or, yeah. or a Zoom meeting? Absolutely. And I think the great the great thing about coronavirus, if there has to be an upside, is just the, the world of possibility, and I'm sure Adam, you'll agree, that um, has now become obvious to us, particularly thinking about how people may be unable to travel or reluctant to travel, where you could have almost like what they call a hub and spoke model. So you could have, you know, a, a studio set up like this um, in different locations around Australia, all around the world, and maybe that some of them have a small live audience, and then you're you're basically switching in between. So you could have different keynote speakers at different locations, engaging with the live audience that's there, but then bringing in your online audience, uh, bringing in a speaker from another country, people coming in on Zoom, integrating with your social media platform, so your Twitter and your Instagram. You know, I think there's so much possibility and all those sorts of things still keep everything really engaging. And then the beauty of it as well is that you've got so much more um, measurement um, tools from that than you would from a, a normal live event. Well, that's another question I've got for Adam. I mean, one of the, the, the beauties of online events is, is that ability to measure what's, what's going on. Can you explain to me what you can measure and, and, you know, and, and what you can provide a client? Yeah, exactly right, Nick. With our uh, webcast system, full post-event analytics can be provided to the client, which we often find that they're very, very interested in. So we can provide... Uh, total viewers, uh, individual viewers, uh, how long they've watched for, uh, where in the world they are, uh, what device they're watching on, uh, mobile phone, tablet, desktop, smart TV. Yes, I imagine, you know, trying to sell your event to, to uh, advertisers, sponsors and, and exhibitors, that would certainly be a great tool. Yes, exactly right, Nick. Um, we often find the end clients, uh, as I say, very, very interested in the analytics. And we can provide very, very detailed analytics right down to the minute. Um, so you can see, you know, during a one hour keynote presentation, who was turning on, who was turning off, who's popular, who's not. Uh, and obviously, you know, knowing how many people have watched the broadcast, 
very, very important for, for advertisers and, and exhibitors who have, uh, you know, sponsored an event. Yeah, great data to have. Can I just add, and this has just come to me, because we're usually behind the scenes and, you know, this is quite an uncomfortable place to be for us, but it, it sort of drives home to me the difference, I suppose, if you were briefing a speaker and then they're just speaking from home at Zoom versus the level of professionalism you'll get out of them by bringing them into a studio as well. I think you really, when you're thinking about your content and who who's delivering, having sat here, I think there's a real benefit to bringing your speakers into a studio or potentially going to them if there's a, um, a minister or another, you know, somebody that you really want to get on camera and, or into your program, but it's really hard. I think this gives you that opportunity to actually get some of those those big fish into your program that potentially back in the live world, you know, to get a minister to turn up to open your conference, not as easy. Mm. And to add to that, I think for a speaker now, particularly those high profile ones, if they're delivering to an online event, they know that what it's forever, you know, this is recorded. So for them to know that it's going to be professionally done, um, I'm sure that it would make them um, way more keen to uh, present at, a, at an event that, that makes them look really good and, and shows them in the best possible light rather than a Zoom recording. And plenty, I mean, plenty of studies have shown that the, the effectiveness of a message, 80% is, is in delivery is, is, and 20% is often just content. Uh, so obviously if you elevate all those elements, then impact is going to be you know, so much greater. Great. Well, obviously, there's a lot more to uh, pick apart in, in this subject, but hopefully this should give you an idea of uh, just what's possible and, and what you can do to elevate uh, your, your delivery to your audience. Um, I'd like to thank Tiffany and, and, and Peter for joining me today, and, and especially Adam and, and the team at uh, Inverse Imaging. And, and I mean the team. There's a lot, of, a lot of people here. It's a great setup. So if you do want to know more, uh, look, get in touch with either of us. We're happy to chat. But as, uh, hopefully that can, that can uh, get you on your way to uh, having greater impact at your next event. Mm -hmm.